you know, it can take up to a month from the time we actually get the keys for a vehicle like this until you actually see it on the internet. Today, the day that we're filming this segment, is the 24th of September 2018. 365 days ago, we actually published our episode on the 2017 Chevrolet Cruze Premier. Now, I watched that video before coming in front of the camera today. And it's not very good. I don't really recommend going back and watching it, but you certainly can if you want to. But that got me thinking, because originally I was just going to do a quick snapshot on this car, talk a little bit about what's different for 2018, talk about what's underneath the hood, and then call it a wrap. But because that episode really isn't that good, and because I think that I have grown quite a bit as a presenter and a journalist since then, we're going to do a full episode. So our spotlight today is on this 2018 Chevrolet Cruze Diesel. This is the only non-luxury sedan slash hatchback that is sold in Canada with a diesel engine. Now Chevrolet does have another vehicle, the Equinox diesel, and then GMC has the terrain. But if you want to get a diesel vehicle that's a 2018 model year in Canada, you got to go luxury. So we're going to be showing you everything about this car, taking it on a road test, and figuring out, is it worth getting a diesel? Now, I would imagine that our European viewers might be thinking, big deal, we have diesels everywhere. Everybody makes a diesel in Europe. And yeah, it's true, they do. And even the companies that have pulled their diesels out of the North American market, such as Mercedes-Benz and the Volkswagen Group, still sell diesels in Europe. So this vehicle is a big deal here, but maybe not for you over there. The reason really is that engine. You start it up, you'll know it's a diesel. But not that bad, actually. In fact, this isn't as loud as a lot of the diesels of decades past. Well, especially decades past, but even ones that have come out within the last maybe 10 years or so. It's actually relatively quiet. It's even quieter on the road. You really only hear it if you are driving in the city. Now, this vehicle as equipped is a little bit more expensive than the 2017 Chevy Cruze that we featured. First of all, it's the hatchback, so it adds a little bit of cost to that. But this also has the True North diesel package, which adds pretty much all the features. And then it also has the RS Sport appearance package adds bigger rims and fog lights to the front of the car. Now, one of the main concerns that we had with the Chevy Cruze before were the halogen headlights. Fortunately, they're still there and they're still terrible. But aside from that though, I actually do think that this is a pretty cute looking car. It's cute. It's a different color too. I mean, this crush color is certainly crushy. If you like orange crush, that is. But it is a compact vehicle. And despite it being one, which usually means that they're best for the city, I don't actually recommend driving this in the city. Diesels are bad if you're going to be doing a lot of stop and go and a lot of slow driving. You really do need to drive it on the highway. So this is good as a commuter car. If you're living somewhere like we are in the middle of nowhere and need to drive into a big city every day. That way the diesel engine gets the most out of it and uses the DEF or diesel emission fluid to actually reduce those emissions and make the engine run more efficiently. Now, what is so special about this other than the diesel engine? Well, there isn't really much. Like I said, it's fully loaded, so it is different from the 2017 that we did. So we are going to be going over some of the stuff on the inside. But for the most part, it really is just your regular Chevy Cruze with a turbocharged diesel engine up front. So let's jump in now because there isn't much in the back. But we can take a look at what's going on on the inside with Chevy's entry-level compact car. Now, the inside here doesn't really differ too much from what we saw in the 2017. The only difference with the True North package, you do get the power sunroof up top and you do have a one inch larger screen. It is an eight inch Chevy MyLink display. It's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And now that Apple CarPlay supports Google Maps, that might help. For me, not so much. Aside from that, you have front heated seats, heated steering wheel, cruise control, blind spot monitoring, forward collision warning, and rear cross traffic alert. It's not loaded with safety tech, but this is really what you can get with it. There are rear parking sensors and a button for traction control. There's no automatic climate control. It's just fan speed and temperature for all occupants in the vehicle. And really the dashboard here, it's plastic, but you do have a little bit of leather that runs along the bottom part of it. But this is a compact car. We've driven a number of compact cars so far for 2018. We've driven something like the Hyundai Elantra. We've also driven the Mazda 3. The new 2019 Kia Forte is also going to be pretty good as well. So there's a lot of competition in this market. But the one thing that helps to make it stand out is that diesel. If you want a 2018 car and you want a diesel, this is it. Unless you're going up to a BMW 3 Series or a Jaguar. That's the thing. This is the only consumer car in the segment that offers a diesel here in Canada. 
And as far as I can tell, it is the only one for the foreseeable future that is going to be offering a diesel. We still don't know what Mazda is doing with their Skyactiv D engines here. It seems like they've kind of given up with Skyactiv X being the next great big thing for them. So if you really do want a new car and you want a diesel, this is your option. So we're going to take it on the road now. We're going to talk about how it performs, how it drives, and really the benefit, the reason people are buying this, or should be buying this, is the fuel economy. So is it better than the 2017 Premier that we had? And is it better than any of the other compact sedans we've driven in this segment so far? So why is it that the Chevy Cruze diesel is such an important vehicle? Well, first of all, after Volkswagen Group and quietly Mercedes-Benz pulled their diesels out of North America, it's left a huge void. And you really do have to give GM credit for being the one to produce a diesel engine for the consumer market considering it really was GM that killed the diesels back in the 80s with the Oldsmobile. So I think it's very interesting that they're the one now that has the only one on the market that isn't a luxury segment vehicle. Now when it comes to the Chevy Cruze, the diesel comes in both the hatchback and the sedan, and you can even get it with a six-speed manual. So if you want that, the option's there for it. This one though is configured with the nine-speed automatic. And really the whole point of owning a diesel is better fuel efficiency, especially if you're using it on a longer drive than just back and forth in town. They're really not that great if you're gonna be doing a lot of stop and go traffic and if you're gonna be doing a lot of short distance stuff. Really it's meant for long driving. Now I don't mean long driving like 18 hours a day, but I do mean something more than a 10 minute drive to McDonald's. Now here's what I wanna talk about because when we picked this car up, we did about 125 kilometers to get from Montreal to home. And during that drive, we did an average of five liters per 100 kilometers. It's actually really good, especially for a little hatchback like this. Usually we're looking in the seven to low eight number when it comes to a gas version during the entire week that we've used it. Now the problem is I've done another 30 kilometers on this car since our big drive from Montreal. So our average went from five liters per 100 up to 6.6. .6. It's still pretty good, but you can see that doing a lot of short stuff in town, stop, go, stop, go, really will hurt your fuel economy. And in fact, I wanted to see what the difference was for a full city experience over highway. Now we haven't driven as much, like I said, 30 kilometers, but my average for in the city, for me just driving those 30 kilometers here, 9.5 liters, really bad. But how does this compare to the 2017 Chevy Cruze that we drove? You know, now that we're at the end of our first full year doing new cars with test drive, it's important for me to think back to the vehicle that we had before. In fact, we're driving to the same place where I had my big rant about the fact that there is no auto start stop disable button for this vehicle. And while I still think Chevy should offer it for consumers to be able to turn off their auto start stop, with a vehicle like this, I'm less upset about it than I was with the gas version. First of all, I find that it's maybe been tuned a little bit better. You see here, we come up to the stop. Now this is a red light. So normally if I was at a stop, I'd stop and then go. Just a split second, enough time for me to be able to go before the engine stops. So maybe they've tuned it a little bit better, but because this car is meant more for fuel economy, not quite as much as something like the Chevy Volt, right? But we're getting a little bit better mileage than we are with the gas. I don't mind it quite as much. I think there still should be a button for it. Love or hate GM, if this vehicle is successful, if the three diesels that they're offering in North America are successful enough, it should reopen the door for more of them to enter Canada. But let's talk quickly about the diesel performance on this vehicle. Fortunately, you can see here it's pretty wet, so we're not gonna be doing really any hard driving with it. But the little 137 horsepower engine actually does a pretty decent job. I'm not as disappointed with it as I thought it would be. 240 pound-feet of torque, though, that's certainly a nice plus. So you don't usually find that with such a small vehicle such as this. So we're on a road here. If we floor it, I get pushed back into my seat and it picks up speed pretty well. It's not a quick car, it's not a sporty car, but I really don't think you're gonna have as much trouble getting onto the highway as you might think. Now I know some people complain that diesels are underpowered and certainly they are. The whole point of them is to be efficient, not for them to be sporty. But I think if you're using this as even a family hauler, if you put three, four people in here, you should be pretty good. I don't think you're gonna to have too much to complain about. So let's talk fuel numbers for a minute. Thinking back to the most recent compact hatchback we featured on Test Drive, the 2018 Hyundai Elantra GT with the six-speed manual, we averaged 7.9 liters per 100 kilometers during our week with that vehicle. We drove about 400 kilometers, which is kind of low for what we do here on Test Drive. 
The Subaru Impreza we had averaged 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers with its all-wheel drive setup during the winter. Now back to the cruise diesel though. In-town driving with short 5 to 10 minute drives weren't efficient for us at all. With an average of 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers after about 120 kilometers of in-town driving. We managed to bring that number down significantly to 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers with a total of 680 kilometers driven for the week. Not to mention the 111 kilometer drive to Montreal on our drop off averaged only 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers, well below the estimated highway fuel economy numbers. So that is a huge plus for us. Also, the exterior design was good. However, it's important to note that the 2019 Chevrolet Cruze has already been announced in the US and styling is more in line with the Impala has that we drove a few weeks ago, though the interior does seem to be about the same. The diesel engine sound wasn't overpowering. While there's no mistaking it for a diesel, it was quiet enough in comparison to the petrol cruise we featured last year. Chevrolet's fast start for the diesel glow plugs was also as advertised. The wait to start system was quick, and on the 20 degree plus days it took no extra time, and even the single digit temperatures only added about 2 seconds to our start time. Further testing in the winter will be required though. GM's infotainment is still a plus for us. Though not coming with the navigation on this trim, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto resolved that problem. And we also can't fault the hatchback's design when it comes to overall space. We had no issues getting things in the trunk, and all of our passengers had pretty good space throughout. But we did have complaints in other departments. And the first one that comes as no surprise if you're a regular viewer of Test Drive are the halogen headlights. Performance is not good at all. We did extensive testing. The halogen fog lamps that come on the RS package make a huge difference. Without them, nighttime visibility is really bad. The high beams also don't do much to assist. LED should be offered, as most of the other compacts in this segment have them, and it doesn't appear the 2019s get LED tech either. We also noted some fit and finish issues with the exterior panels, mostly with the front fenders and hood line and the rear taillights on the lift gate filled up with condensation after a car wash. We still found the road noise to be high on this car, making it a little harder to have a conversation with the passenger next to you on the highways. And finally, some of the interior modules scream cost cutting. The power windows are automatic down, but not automatic up. Though GM often uses auto up just for the driver, this was missing. No climate control on the diesel, nor wireless charging. If GM wants their diesels to be a success, they should ensure consistency across their lineup. The diesels lose out on features over the petrol, but even the diesel hatch has different options available than the sedan. Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the 2018 Chevrolet Cruze hatchback with a 1.6 liter turbo diesel engine. Let us know in the comments below if you think GM's diesel comeback will be popular with buyers, or will resale Volkswagen TDIs be the king of the diesel world here in Canada? Make sure you've subscribed to our channel. You've made it this far in the video, so we must be doing something right. Until next time, take care.